On this week's edition of Wildcat Weekly, basketball and uncommon classes. All this and more coming up next. Welcome back to this week's edition of Wildcat Weekly. I'm your host, Tegan Garrity. Did you know this is the first week of the new year? Let's start the year of the dragon off strong. This past Saturday, February 10th, marked the beginning of the Chinese New Year. The holiday falls on a different day every year because it is based on the lunar calendar and is always on the day of the second new moon after the winter solstice, which is December 21st. Each year is represented by an animal from the 12-year Chinese zodiac cycle. Celebrations of this holiday date back to over 3,000 years ago, and they are meant to bring good fortune for the upcoming year. So in Chinese, we actually call it Chunjie, which is the spring festival, because it's the arrival of spring, and it's also like the start of the new year. Um, But we also mark it as a history of the the monster Nian. Um, He was a man-eating monster. Um, We actually scared him away, and so it's kind of a marking of like, yeah, we celebrate this, and we survived. Um, And so the celebration is 15 days long. Red is the color that is most commonly associated with the holiday because it is believed to bring luck and prosperity. Traditional celebrations include family gatherings, honoring ancestors, the lighting of lanterns, and eating cultural foods. It's just a good time for everyone to come together, you know, celebrate, go shopping, you know, give each other gifts and all these things, like decorate together. So it's just a really nice, like, family bonding experience, get closer with your community kind of thing. Chinese classes have been celebrating by practicing traditional calligraphy and decorating their classrooms. The Chinese Honor Society decorated the display case outside of the D-Wing and volunteered at the Naperville Public Library this past Saturday. These groups have many opportunities to experience Chinese culture and contribute to the community. We do so much more outside of the class to physically like learn what we're like studying in Chinese class and then a dive into the culture and then we also get to do like activities like actually going to Chinatown or watching Chinese movies. New Year's celebrations will continue tomorrow at Fox Valley Mall for an event with many holiday activities from 12 to 2 p.m. and on Sunday the annual Chicago New Year's parade will take place in Chinatown at 1 p.m. and for Wildcat Weekly I'm Sienna McNinney. What's up Wildcats? I'm Mr. McCoskey, and here's what's happening at NEQA between today and next Thursday, February 22nd. Seniors, today is the last day to submit your phonetic name pronunciation for graduation. The form is linked in the Class of 2024 Google Classroom. Tonight, a showing of the movie The Great Debaters is happening in the auditorium at 5 p.m. Make sure to stop by to see this great movie as part of Black History Month. We have a three-day weekend this weekend because of President's Day, so enjoy your extra day off on Monday. Next week is Multicultural Celebration Week. Be sure to stop by the Commons on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday to check out a wide variety of different activities that celebrate traditions, languages, and activism around our world and in our community. Thursday night, be sure to come to the Multicultural Show at 7 p.m. in the auditorium. Tickets can be purchased at the door. You don't want to miss this fantastic show. Finally, six members of the speech team are headed to the state this weekend. Good luck to Elisa Shroff, Anurag Ghosh, April Zhang, Avanish Thiagarajan, Ben Mosshammer, and Mei Ling Sun. We know you'll do great. And that's what's up, Wildcats. Have a great day. Good morning, Wildcats. My name is Charlie Scriven Young, and welcome back to Nequa Replay. Last Friday, the Wildcats scored a huge upset win over Wabanzi, handing the Warriors their second loss. That game, the cheer team also had their senior night. Tomorrow, girls track has a meet at 9 a.m. at Wien Warrenville South, while the boys team is at Homewood Flossmoor at 10 a.m. That same morning, boys swim and dive heads to sectionals. The dive team heads to Matia at 9 a.m., and the rest of the swim team joins them later at 1 p.m., also at Matia. On Tuesday, the boys track team has an invite at Plainfield East at 4 p.m. The next day, Wednesday, the girls head up to Plainfield East to compete as well. 
On Monday the 19th, hockey has their first round of state at Canlin against Stevenson at 8 p.m. On Wednesday, February 21st, the boys' basketball team continues at regionals away against Downers Grove North at 7.30 p.m. Luke Kincaid will further prove why he is the all-time leading scorer. John has the details. Last week, senior Luke Kincaid recently passed Nikwa alumni John Pulikidis for all-time leading scorer in boys' basketball history. This record is very rare to achieve in one's career. I mean, it's special. It's something I've been kind of aiming at since I was a little kid. Um, I, oh, there's so many great players that came through Nikwa, and just to pass them, it's, it's great. I know John, and there's some few other ones, there's great players, and to be able to pass them, it's a huge accomplishment. Along with breaking this record, Luke and his teammates are looking to break much more. I mean, I would like to make a deep playoff run. I think that's everyone's goal on the team. Uh, we have a senior-oriented team, so I think if we go far in playoffs, it'll be fun and, and hopefully play collegiate basketball somewhere. Make sure to come support the boys' basketball team as they head into the regional playoff game against Downers Grove North. And from Equal Replay, I'm John Harrell and Boys. There are so many different classes here to take at Nikwa that you probably didn't know about. Let's take a look at a few of them. Being that there are 244 classes offered at Nikwa, many courses aren't as well known as others. Ms. Jensen teaches interior design and apparel construction, two classes you can still sign up for. So interior design is broken up into four different units. We talk about housing and why people choose the houses they do based on their families and then um, how different parts of the country have different styles of houses. And then um, we learn how to draw floor plans and we learn how to draw elevations both by hand and on a CAD program. Then we do really fun projects. So we do a dorm room project where the students find a university of their choice in a dorm room um, and they redesign it, reconfigure it. So apparel construction is mostly a sewing class. So they make three different projects in apparel one, but I also have apparel two, which you have to take apparel one first. And they make zip fly pants. They make a project of their choice. So I have some students making corsets right now and then a lined jacket. Did you know that Nikwa has an auto shop? There are classes that you can take to get the chance to experience it. Well, I teach in this class auto mechanics, auto service, and power mechanics. In power mechanics, we deal with small engines. You probably see behind me. We deal with learning how a small engine works, the four-stroke cycle, how to take them apart, put them together, how to maintain them, how to service them. Once you get into mechanics, we start working on cars. These are just a few of the many courses that aren't as well known here at Niqua that you still have the chance to sign up for. And for Wildcat Weekly, I'm Tegan Garrity. Thank you for watching this week's edition of Wildcat Weekly. Have a great weekend, Wildcats.